The concept of density is one that we often teach, and yet our students seem to have much trouble understanding it. It's a, it's a very common misconception for many students, and it's probably one of those things that it takes a certain maturity of the mind before the students really grasp that. You can ask a student, if I take a short piece of board and I cut it and I put it in a, in a bowl of water, what will happen to it? And they'll tell you that it will float. Well, what would happen then if I took a large, like a two by four, and I were to take it to the lake and put it in the water? And without thinking, many times the students will say, well, it will sink because it's bigger. They don't understand, they don't internalize this concept of density and the mass volume relationship. Uh, I teach in an area, and perhaps some of you do, where we like to stack them deep and teach them cheap. So I like things that are quick, simple, and uh, easy to do. So today we're gonna take a look at what is called the golf ball float. What I have is an empty tennis ball canister, cheap and free, uh, some water softening salt, you can buy a 40 pound bag of that for just a few dollars and it will go a long way. And a used yellow golf ball. I like to use the yellow or the orange ones just simply for the visibility factor. You could use white ones. Don't go out and buy those things new. Uh, perhaps you have a student who works at the golf, local golf area and scooping, water, uh, scooping the golf balls out of the water hazards. So sometimes you can buy them cheap or you can get them for no price. Uh, students will, uh, will do almost anything for extra credit, you know. So we're going to start off with the golf ball float then. And I would ask the students to say, tell me what you observe. And so once again, we are going to start with observations and the students will say, well, we see some salt and a golf ball in there. And knowing that we're talking about the concept of density in that particular day, I'll ask them something about, well, what, what can you tell me about the densities? And some students will say, well, obviously the salt is more dense than the golf ball because the salt is under the golf ball. And then some student will say, are you sure about that? I mean, or is it just because the salt was put in first and the golf ball is on top and it couldn't move around? So that'll start a little bit of discussion. And then some student will ultimately say, well, that's not all that's in the canister. And I'll say, well, what do you mean? They'll say, well, there's air in there as well. Oh, well, that's a good observation. So what can we say then about that? We've got salt, we've got a golf ball, and we've got air, and something about the order of those materials. So what we're going to do then is we're going to just take and put a little bit of tap water into the container. And fill it about three-fourths full. We'll put the cap back on it. And these weren't meant to be watertight necessarily, so we'll hold a towel over it. And then we're going to take a look at some observations again. And with the water in here, once again, what we see is that we've got salt. We've got a golf ball, we have water, and we have air. And now the students are beginning to say, okay, we've got four items in the canister. We definitely know that the golf ball is more dense than the water, and the air is less dense than the water, and we're still not sure about the salt in the golf ball process. So we're going to put a cloth on top, and then we're just going to shake this for a moment. The reason I like to use water softener salt is one, it's cheap. Two, as it dissolves, it doesn't have additives in it, and therefore the mixture tends to come out uh, a little more clear, it's easier to see. You could use rock salt, but it perhaps would be a little cloudy. And the water softer salt is very pure, it dissolves rather quickly. You could use common table salt or kosher salt as well. But again, those uh, are more expensive, and then they also tend to cause, with common table salt, there are additives in there that would cause it to be somewhat cloudy. Okay. So we're finished shaking, and we'll let the air that's in there perking along kind of settle out. And now what we see is that, again, we have four layers. We have our salt layer. We have a salt water layer. And now we have our golf ball, and instead of being more dense than the water that we had in there. Now it's floating, so we know that it's less dense, and of course we've got the air on top. And that's kind of interesting. Most uh, people don't realize that golf balls will float. Of course, most people don't play with saltwater hazards. I happen to have some magic blue liquid. And I'm going to take this magic blue liquid, and I want to pour this magic blue liquid on top of what I have inside of the canister already. And I'm pouring it rather slowly so that we don't make a mess. 
And students want to know, what is the magic blue liquid? And I'll tell them, if I tell them, then the magic is gone from it. That's part of the magic. And so, we now have an additional layer in here. We have our solid salt, we have our salt water, we have the magic blue liquid, and then in between somewhere in there is the golf ball. So what can we say then about the relative densities of these materials? Well, obviously, since the magic blue liquid is on top, it therefore must be less dense than the salt water was. Well, what would happen if I were to take and push the golf ball down into the salt water layer so that instead of being kind of in this middle layer between the blue and the salt water, so we'll push it down, and indeed it pushes down, and then we let it come back up, and it rises up, but as it rises back up, it goes back to that same level where it was at the top of the salt water, but below the magic blue liquid in there. And at this point, the students are already beginning to hypothesize, well, I know what that magic blue liquid is. That's nothing, just plain water. Fine. So what does that tell you then, if you think that that is just plain water with food coloring in it, what does that tell you about fresh water and salt water? Well, that the fresh water is obviously less dense and it will float on the top of salt water. That becomes an important thing for many people who live in coastal areas as they talk about saltwater estuaries and they talk about the salt water and the fresh water as we have lakes and rivers that drain into the salt water and how that works. That the fresh water does remain on top of that process for a while. And then the students, of course, they always want to take another step. Well, what would happen if you were to mix all of that up together? So I allow them to make a prediction at this point. What do you think will happen? Well, there are probably three outcomes. The golf ball is going to rise all the way to the top, the golf ball is going to stay where it is, or the golf ball is going to sink further down. So we'll mix it and see. So we'll just do a simple quick mix with that. And then in this particular case, we see that the golf ball sank to the bottom. We've removed that interface, so we know that the magic blue liquid and the salt water, whatever those materials were, they were obviously soluble with each other. And now what we have is just a blue liquid layer that we have, and the golf ball is sitting at the bottom. Now, sometimes, depending upon the ratios of the magic blue liquid, which obviously is fresh water with blue food coloring in it, the ratio of that, sometimes if there's a lot of salt water and very little fresh water, there, it's not enough that it will dilute it and the golf ball will continue to float. So you'll get a variety of things that will take place with that. The nice thing about this demonstration is that once you've finished it, all you have to do is to take and dump the blue liquid out, give it a quick rinse, put the cap back on it, it goes back on the shelf and it's ready to go again next year. The other thing is that if you don't want to do this as a demonstration, this again is a quick and easy lab that you can do with your students. It's not at all expensive to have empty tennis canisters. Uh, you can, for, for well under $10, you can have a 40 pound bag of water softer salt and some relatively cheap golf balls that you found. And as a result of that process, this is an experiment that the students could do. They can play with it. They can dunk the golf ball up and down and look around and see what happens. Uh, many times I like to take demonstrations when possible and turn them into labs. It's a lot more fun for students to do the work than to see the work. And so when possible, I like to take demonstrations and convert them into lab activities, particularly if they're things that are cheap and easy to do. So a set of these, you could have 15 or 20 of these sitting in a, in a shelf somewhere, water softer salt. The lab prep is about two minutes, about the amount of time it takes to get it out, set it on the table, and you're ready to go. So that makes a nice, easy activity or a demonstration, whichever you would like to go. Dem uh, density is a very difficult thing. And when we talk about density, students oftentimes have a very difficult time remembering what is the formula. Do I multiply by mass? Do I divide by density? What are we going to do? Well, let's go to the board and I'll show you just a quick little way that will cause students to remember this, whether they choose to or not. A groaner. Density equals mass over volume. And if you don't remember that, you're going to break this old teacher's heart. 
And that's about as, about as corny as it gets, but it's one of those things that's probably going to stick in the students' minds, and they're going to remember that later on, that density is equal to mass over volume, or you're going to break my teacher's heart. So that's a way that they can finally remember the equation. They can look at the M, they can look at the V as the heart is split in two, and they can begin to see something about density. And now they know, need to know that mass is divided by volume to give me density, and they can help remember that. So a quick way to remember density, perhaps, and an easy and inexpensive way to reinforce the concept of density that students have difficulty with, the golf ball float.